where I'm going. The dangling carrot that hang from the rear view. Uh -huh. Your dreams in the past ain't nowhere near you. Uh -huh. Backseat drivers got nothing but two cents. Shotgun riders, too biased, they all liars. I should get an A for effort, I'm too tired. But I'm never giving up, that's why I'm kinda admired. Role model, like it or not, I gotta play it. Sugarcoat the rhyme sometimes, but still say it. Said I was quitting at 40, it's just a fib. I'm still a kid that's wiping the food off of my bib. You ever wanted something so bad that you could taste it? Cried over every Opportunity wasted. Okay, so all this week we've been riding the brand new Royal Enfield Continental GT 650. Um, I've got Holly with me, um, who's Hiya. who's also been riding it the last couple of days. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really uh, an interesting experience. I've been a, a fan of a, for a while with this bike. I mean, I've seen it at tons of shows, and you know, it's been it's been great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's my first time ever riding Royal Enfield. And yeah, what, what a fantastic little bike. The Continental, obviously, it, it's part of the, the, the brand new twin range, um, 650 twin range from Royal Enfield. Yeah. Um, which, you know, as we've discussed in the Interceptor video that we just did, yeah. um, you know, it takes the Royal Enfield brand and models into a new place that they've never been in before. Yeah, you know? yeah totally, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's going to fit uh, the European and certainly the English market mm -hmm. really, really well mm -hmm. um, because there's no doubt that they're stunning bikes. Yeah. Yeah. and that people love them. Yeah, I think especially with the, the Continental, that, that cafe racer look, um, which is such a massive trend now, isn't it? There is so much love at the moment for, for cafe racers and uh, to be able to pick one up that looks like that without you having to spend tons and tons of money to get it to look like that, um, it's it's going to be such a popular bike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it, that's what it is. It is a cafe racer. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And, yeah. and you know, I've seen quite a lot of reviews on the, the some of the 650 twins. You know, if they've been reviewing the the, the Interceptor um, and the Continental, and they've just kind of said, well, basically they're both the same, but mm. one's just got drop bars and. Um, I don't think that quite does it justice. Actually, I think no. they're totally two different, two different models. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. The look of them is 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 chalk and cheese, isn't it? Really. Totally. Um, no, that that cafe racer frame, they've absolutely hit the nail on the head with that. Because yeah. new riders, you know, that are that are learning, you know, it's a it's a massive craze at the moment, the cafe racer, mm. and that is going to tap really, really nicely into that that market. Yeah. Sure thing. And, you know, it's probably the first time that I've ridden a bike like that, like a proper cafe racer. Okay. So, but it is a riding position I'm sort of more used to on a daily basis. Obviously, with my yeah. bike, it's quite um, lent forward. Yeah. Um, I know, how did you find the, the, the riding position? Yeah, I found it, um, I mean, it's it's very different, but, but very easy to get used to. Um, my bars are kind of, I think they're called buck bars, so they're, they're sort of up and, and sort of in, in this kind of position, Proper so I'm Harley. straight backed, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is, yeah, the drop bars, but they're not as dropped as some bikes. I mean, I haven't ridden, um, for instance, like a Triumph Thruxton, but sitting on them at the shows, I mean, they are really lent down. And these are kind of somewhere in between that. I think they're enough to look really cool, but they're not enough to make it an unrideable bike. I mean, I think you should you could definitely go some distance on that bike. 100%, and actually out of the two, out of the two bikes, the, the Interceptor and the Continental GT650, I way prefer the Continental yeah, um, yeah. 650, uh, the the riding position. I feel way more at home on it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you know, I just think it's a much more engaging ride for for, for me yeah. personally. Yeah. Depending on what I'm used to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. I think I'm yeah because I'm more familiar with the 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 bar and the style of the Interceptor then I'm, I feel like you do but about that yeah um, but looks wise I would pick the Continental every time sure mm. sure and you know if, if you've actually never ridden a, a Royal Enfield before I think one of the amazing things and obviously we've ridden quite a few different uh, uh, Royal Enfield models um, one of the things that uh, you get to find out is that People love them, you know. Yeah. From a massive age gap, you will get people in the street just sort of like come up, hey mate, what's that bike? That looks, you know, that yeah. looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, it's quite overwhelming actually. I've never had that on any other model of bike we've ever tested, so okay. it's quite an interesting thing. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's actually it's it's a it's a kind of bike where people. Even if it didn't have Royal Enfield written on the side, they'd almost know what it was. Yeah. And I feel a little bit like that with Harley, that sometimes you could see one and you just kind of know 
um, by by the shape of it and and yeah it is it's it's got Royal Enfield written all over it as mm. well as having the the emblems on the side of the tanks as well. Well, I know, and I know the the uh, the design brief was with the Continental 650 was actually to keep quite in. Uh, in tap with the Continental 535 that they had before. Actually, what we've got plastered on the oh, okay. on the yeah, side yeah, there. Yeah. And actually, really I think nice. if you put if you put the two together, it's actually it's got that heritage. You know, they've kept quite true to what they've Absolutely. what they've done in the past. So that's quite interesting. Yeah. So yeah, the the Continental that we've had was the um, Ice Queen. Is that what it's called? The Ice Queen colorway which is a kind of um cream is it an off-white would you describe it yeah probably off-white with with blue with the blue detailing and the blue actually got like a sparkle in it as well don't mm. know if you noticed that it's quite no, i didn't notice that all oh, right okay. it's a girl thing okay <laughs> <laughs> but it is good um so the the the, the ice queen is 5899 pounds in the uk okay um, they start off at 5699 and then that, obviously that's a little bump up so obviously featured to the twins is a brand new engine, right? It's a 650 parallel uh, twin, 648cc parallel twin. It's got 47 horsepower, 52 newton meters of torque. Mm -hmm. My experience of it, particularly in this bike, uh, it's really smooth. Yeah, yeah. I've been amazed yeah. at how smooth it is. Yeah. Um, it's got a really nice swell of torque right through the rev range. Yeah, yeah. And going through the gears as well, it performs well in each one actually, it doesn't does, it? It does, it does. And, and I think they've geared it so that there is torque and power, uh, power available in every gear. Absolutely, yeah. You, you know, and yeah. certainly, like if you if you get caught out in a corner in the wrong gear. Oh yeah, no, it's no problem. It's no, it's no problem. It just yeah. kind of tugs for it. It doesn't chug. You no. know, that that's what's quite cool about it. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, some of the other you know single uh, some of the thumpers that 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 Royal Enfield would have might do some of that. This okay. engine is way more smooth. You know, it's a smooth engine and it has got a half decent amount of power. I wouldn't have said it was a fast motorbike, but it does um, it, it does encourage you to uh, ride it pretty hard, particularly with the, the Continental GT I found. I found yeah. myself really pushing it. Um, yeah. and, and I've actually, I've really enjoyed doing that. And while I was in Cafe Race and what's all that about, actually having rode it and, you know, taking it through some of the nice twisties mm -hmm. that we've got here, mm -hmm. I can see myself, yeah, actually, do you know what, it be, would be quite fun to race between cafe to cafe, because I think that's originally what Cafe Race oh, was okay. about, right? Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, actually, riding right behind you when I was on the Interceptor and watching you on it, it looked like you were having loads of fun on it. Loads of fun. Yeah, yeah. Loads of fun. And you can kind of see that, it's, you can throw it about a little bit. And Jeff, the uh, managing director of the company, actually rode quite a lot on the Continental 650. Um, you know, and you'll kind of see him clipped in the videos because he is riding the bike at different points. But he's an ex racer. Um, he's a really good rider. Oh, he's amazing rider. And 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 his his opinion was that. He, he really loved the bike as well. He totally bought into that kind of concept. Yeah. You know, obviously it's less power than he's used to, but he, he really enjoyed um, really, you know, riding it pretty hard in the yeah. corners and stuff. I mean, there's a couple of times we realised, didn't we, that the GoPro wasn't on. And we got all the way to the top of the pass, to the bottom, and he's, oh, it's not on. Um, and oh, no problem. He shot back up there, raring to do it again, wasn't it? So yeah. maybe he did it on purpose. He wanted to have another go. Yeah, and, and like me, he was, he was more of a fan of the Continental Sig. GT 650 yeah, yeah. than the Interceptor, but yeah. I think that's probably the kind of bikes that we ride. Yeah, 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 for sure. Can't you can agree. totally throw it about, and, and obviously we're going to talk about the handling. Mm. Um, but it also sounds nice as well, right? Sounds great, isn't it? Yeah, it's a it's quite a rumble, quite a, quite a deep rumble, but it's not overpowering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. cool, cool sound. And and you know the twin silencers on it. I think that there's some of the one. You know, most new bikes I'd sort of seriously consider about changing the exhaust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one, I don't think I'd, I'd bother. I think it, they yeah. look great, they sound great, they do the job. Yeah. You know, there's no need. I think coming out of a showroom and just buying a bike as is, I can't think of anything, number one, for the price that they've got this up for, mm. uh, that looks like how it looks. And also, like you're saying, that sounds like how it sounds, and you haven't actually got to spend any extra money on it. No. I don't think there's actually anything else on the market for that price that you could you could get something straight out and have it and ride it and it looks great without you having to sort of make any mods at all. So while we are here in the studio, I just wanted to as well talk about a little bit about what we were wearing yesterday. Um, so it was the new Urban Pro from Knox, which is the it's like the well, it is an armoured shirt, but it's also a jacket in its own right. 
and that was perfect for what we were doing yesterday as well, wasn't it? So it's really, mm. it was a really good opportunity to test them out. Oh, sure. Um, and I really loved it, and I really like how it looks on as well. I felt really, really comfortable in it. Fantastic. Um, I actually had like a, a, a tight fitting cold killers underneath mine, and then I had my Urban Pro on top. Um, you being a bit more hardy, were just in like a t shirt, weren't you, with it over? Mm. Um, was that you were right temperature yesterday? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, when the sun went down, it got a little bit chilly, but yeah. that yeah. was the point where, um, you know, I put my quilted jacket on over the top. Yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. the benefit with the Urban Pro is that you can do that. Yeah. You know, and, and you can just stick anything over the top. Obviously, a quilted jacket's got no abrasion resistance. No, no, in, no. In it. No. But, yeah. you know, but you're relying on the Urban Pro for that, so yeah. it really does open sort of doors to, to dress yeah. it differently. You on can the put bike. something underneath it or something over it. And then, um, yeah, you just chuck something in your bag, mm. a hoodie or something. You think, oh, I was going to get a bit chilly later on, I'll pop that on later. Yeah. Um, and that's what's great about it, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but for summer riding as well, it's going to be um, fantastic because it's even lighter than the Zephyr, isn't yeah. it? Um, quite a bit, yeah. Quite a bit, yeah. So, so um, yeah, I think it's fantastic. I actually really like the thumb loops as well. That's, mm. that's a new thing, isn't it? It is. Yeah, because yeah. then you just get your glove over and it just, yeah, you don't get that kind of rucking up on your on your wrist. Sure. Yeah, I thought that was very cool. It's good. Right, yeah. so what we're going to do with all the gear um, is put the link in the description. So if you want to find out what we wore on test, um, just check out below and you can see um, all the products that, that we're using. Mm -hmm. And big uh, iPhone users like myself, the pockets are great. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about the handling? Holly. I thought the handling was great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I haven't haven't tried the previous Royal Enfield, so can't compare it to them. Uh, but doing the roads that we did yesterday, I mean, it wouldn't have been possible on my Harley um, at all. So to, to think that I could actually uh, have a go at something like that and ride, ride roads like that on that kind of bike. Um, yeah, and you just take to it. I feel like you sort of get on it and you just, there's nothing difficult about it, you know. No. That it, it just does what it's told and it's, it's, it's really sort of, it, yeah, I mean, in terms of handling yesterday, I found it, the road wasn't easy, but the bike, the bike was easy to ride. That's, gr that's great. Well, you know, I think they've spent a huge amount of time and investment in that whole handling um, de department 100% and um, they collaborated with Harris Performance on the chassis and on the suspension and you can really tell I mm -hmm. mean the Continental um, 650 is just it just eats corners it's really stable I think I think it's it's, e it's easy to turn in yeah you know um, while it is quite a heavy bike sometimes with a heavy bike you can um, feel like it doesn't want to turn in. Certainly a Thrux Sonar, it's a bit of an arrow. It just wants to go straight all okay. the time. Okay. This one actually really does want to, it, you know, it, it does want to turn into the corners yeah. and it's bloody stable while, while it's there as well. Yeah. So I'm a real fan of the chassis. I think it handles really well. Yeah. And I think the suspension is good too. Yeah, the suspension was great. Um, yeah, yeah, so yeah. up the front, you've got non-adjustable um, shock, um, which I think is, is, is great. Mm. And on the rear, you've got a twin gas. Um, fork that uh, suspension that is uh, adjustable okay okay um, but, you know and it actually comes with its own little tool in in the toolkit to change it to which change i think is, is is a nice touch yeah yeah that's a really cool touch yeah yeah um brakes brakes i mean yeah again the brakes for me i mean i think again with our different backgrounds of different bikes we've got different views on brakes and um, anything to my bike is an improvement and i'm um, i mean probably the opposite with you because i could imagine your brakes are pretty sharp they're all right yeah. uh yeah so uh yeah I, I felt like the brakes the brakes were good i mean they were in use a lot uh, especially coming down that pass mm. yesterday um, yeah, all first gear, all braking, engine braking and braking. Um, yeah, it, it, it did the job. For me personally, um, obviously the, 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 the Continental GT has um, single, like like the uh, the Interceptor, I mean the specs on the brakes are the same. Okay. So you've got 320 mil single up the front, you've got 210 mil on the back. I think for me personally, with a bike that, you know, with all weighs so, as much as it does when it's fueled it does weigh 230 kilos yeah um, and it's capable of over 100 mile an hour so you feel like you I, need a bit I think more. you need a bit more power there's okay. initial bite there but i think you know overall power it's a it's a lump to stop at that kind of speed yeah and maybe not everyone's going to be riding it like that but you know i just think yeah we just need some a bit more oomph behind mm -hmm. the brake mm -hmm. that's that's maybe nitpicking but you know that that's my point of view okay so comfort holly what do you think comfort um 
long, long riding, I mean... You prefer the Interceptor for I that. prefer the Interceptor. The seat was more padded. There's just yeah. a little bit more comfort. Uh, the other one was giving me a little bit of a numb bum um, at points. Uh, and I think because of the positioning of the bars as well. But again, I think if you're used to riding like that, I think people would just have no bother with that at all. Um, so while our particular model was fit with a single seat and it's got the seat cowl on it, they do actually come as a, as a, as a twin seat, uh, seat as standard. Okay. Um, and they've got to do that. Uh, part of the regulations, they've got to have a, have a twin seat and that single seat is, a, is an ad, adding extra. But I know you can get a more comfortable seat, you can get a touring seat for oh, okay. it. So that would solve oh, that's some a game of changer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Because I think as well, if you're bar hopping and things, you definitely you'd want the, the cafe racer on there. Yeah, I think um, so. Because it looks so cool. We've done it. But that's brilliant if you can change it up and have something different. Uh, so the tyres fitted exactly the same as the Interceptor 650, the Pirelli uh, Phantom Sport Comps. Okay. I've got no reservations, you know, um, all this week has actually been dry, which is mm. like really something for uh, Cumbria, but I haven't rode it in the wet yet, but in, in um, the dry it's been amazing. Yeah. I've got yeah. rid of all the chicken strips on, on, on that bike and, you know, it really encourages you with the handle. It, I mean, it's great. No, no issues from me. No, it didn't feel sort of slippery. No. And actually we were having to park up in some quite tricky areas yesterday to get out the way of the cars and we had a bit of gravel and actually got it onto the grass didn't we at one point yeah. as well and uh, that was quite bumpy and it seemed like you, you didn't have any issue at all with that no, so no, um, no it, look, it look, looks good a nice tyre nice yeah. tyre okay so that's been our conversation and our little review on the Continental GT650 um, I have to say I'm a fan of this bike yeah and yeah. um, for me, I prefer the Interceptor. You prefer the Interceptor. You know. For ride, but this for look. Yeah, for, mm. okay. Mm -hmm. So It's very pretty. Yeah. Really pretty bike. It is, and you know what? I really encourage uh, people to take this on board. You know, it's a, it's a, great, it's a great bike yeah. at a great price. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. It needs to be tested to, do, to be appreciated, doesn't it? 100%, 100%. Yeah. Okay, so look, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, let us know what you think. Please like, please comment, and uh, subscribe to the channel too. Um, and we will see you... In the next one. In the next one. Well, you will. Yeah. But thank you for having me, because I've had a great time. Have you? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Jeff, um, as well, who's um, mm. dad? Yeah, boss man. Um, obviously, the 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 well, actually, mm. um, it does. While our particular model was fit with the uh, very good. I mean, for, for oh, oh, well, you know. <laughs> uh,